How's it going everybody? It's Mike, this old hot rod. And today, we're gonna sandblast the rear axle. This is my pressure pot. Uh, I bought this a few years ago and at the time I needed it. However, I quickly realized it was probably the worst $200 I ever spent in my life because every single time I've ever tried to use it, it really hasn't worked out that great. But today I have a good feeling that things are gonna work out in my favor. So what I need to do is I'm gonna go grab one of my Tyvek spray suits for painting because I'm a house painter, if you guys didn't know. And I spray my interiors. So, I got my spray suit and a hood. I'm gonna grab a respirator. Just an old junk one. I don't really want anything good. Yeah, that'll get me by. All right. I'm trying to get this rear axle clean. Oh, I need to I need to plug that I need to plug that vent hole. And let's get the sandblast and pot pressure pot down there. And we'll get to get to work on sandblasting this rear axle. I don't know how it's going to go. Hoping it's going to go smooth. Let's see. so good uh, you guys see what I've got done uh, I ran out of media I only put I only put one bag of media in the pressure pot the reason being is I've tried in the past loading it right up with two or three bags and it doesn't seem to work it gets clogged so I am gonna go grab the second bag of media throw it in there and get to work on hopefully finishing it I don't think I'm gonna need the third I have I'd probably say 85, 80% of the rear axle sandblasted at this point. So I think I've kind of got it figured out what I need to do. And uh, let's finish it up and then we'll get this thing in paint. This looks fun, doesn't it? <laughs> I know there are many of you guys that can relate to what I just did. All went well, with the exception of it starting to rain. 
it started sprinkling. I thought I was dripping sweat on the rear axle, but it ended up being raindrops. That's okay, I got it done. So now I gotta roll that thing underneath these, this overhang here on the side of my building and then figure out how I'm gonna get it up that hill. It's not gonna be fun. But I'll get it up there one way or another. Maybe I'll. Let's do a quick walk around to the axle so I can show you guys what it looks like. Came out pretty good. A couple little spots here and there that I may have missed. I'm going to pull these axles out of the rear end so I can replace the gaskets on the end. Also, you can see here this is leaking. This center section is going to come out. I'm going to replace that gasket. I'm going to leave the center section complete. As long as this seal doesn't leak once the car is up and running, I'm going to leave it the way it is. If it does end up leaking, I have the pinion seal. I'll replace it after the fact. But I have no way of just adjusting the pinion gear and getting like the right lash and on all that other stuff. So I tried not to blast down in here. I just tried to blast around the, just the face of it. But all in all, it came out really good. You can see where it's leaking right next to where it's leaking. That's how you know it's a pausey rear axle. This casting number right here, this seven digit number, 8789812, tells, tells me the center section is from 62 to 64. And then you can't see it really, but the stamping is BM405. And anyone that does some research and looks online will note that that is from a taxi. So this rear axle came out of a taxi that was built in 62 to 65. The C in front of this four digit number dictates the rear axle was built in Canada. I believe it was behind a three speed. It's posi rear axle three speed and it said it was under a taxi so that's the rear axle all cleaned up I'm gonna get this up top in the garage you can see my hands shaking I'm gonna get this axle up top get it blown off with the air compressor try to get as much sand out of it as I can anything that's in the nooks and crannies and then uh, get this thing inside the garage so I can get it wiped down and I want to get this in sealer hopefully today I have some epoxy sealer I can get it into. And then once it's in sealer, that's when I'm going to pull everything apart. I just don't want it to rust. So that's the reason behind me wanting to get it right into sealer right away. So it doesn't really help that it was raining. You can see instantly I got some spots, but those will clean right up. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna grab my I'm gonna go grab my easy up so I can cover the axle in case it starts raining again. It wasn't supposed to rain, but if anyone in Massachusetts that's watching that owns a hot rod knows it's been raining up here a lot. So I'm gonna put the easy up over the axle. And then grab some acetone on a rag, wipe this thing down. Get it cleaned up so I can get some epoxy sealer on it.
can't paint it if it's on these stands. I don't know. I don't know if my little paint cart thing will hold it. wide enough. Alright, go we'll grab some ratchet straps. I think I'm going to be okay. It doesn't help that it's on a hill. So I guess that's how I'm going to paint the rear axle. The things you got to do accomplish something. Alright. That's what you gotta do to get stuff done. Ingenuity. Right? Waiting for a loud crash. <laughs> so it's 10 ounces of the catalyst. The reason I pulled the clearing first for anybody who doesn't really paint much or is learning I learned that if you pull the gray in and it sloshes around, you end up having to put your finger in the cup to clean the edge of the cup so you can get your measurements, so you can read exactly where, where, it, where it filled to, because sometimes it, you get like a funky shaped line. If you pull the clear in, you can see exactly how much you put in without having to wipe the inside edge of the cup. Now, let me give this a little bit better of a steering. Finally, a nice weekend. Said Ali and I were out in the coop yesterday, went to Brad's house, saw a lot of guys, a lot of people that watched the channel, which like I said earlier was really cool. It was nice to finally meet a lot of the people that that knew about the 34 before I ever did. And again, I mean I've said it a hundred times. Just really, really fortunate that Brad called me, or Kathy messaged me online and said Brad wants you to call him. He wants you to build the 34, so. I don't know if, it, if there's an honor that's higher than that in the hot rod world. You know, the guys that were a generation or two before us are now choosing the people they want to care, to care for their hot rods, their beloved cars, so. Brad sold me the very first car he ever built, which was the 30 Coupe, as all, as, it's also known as the Barrows Coupe or Firstborn. Um, I was very fortunate to buy that car. And then, like I said, the, the 34. I'm going to let this paint kick off inside the cup, do its thing. I'm going to get a couple other things ready to go for paint. So when the rear axle is done, I can get the steering wheel, the ladder bars, and a couple other small parts hung up on the rack and get those painted as well. See ya.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that front cross member in sealer and then the next video is going to be, be me getting everything in paint and yeah that's probably it for the next video as well just trying to get everything finished in paint I, don't want, I have to run and grab more white I ran out of white the finished paint that was a Napa product a, a Sonor whatever it was Martin Sonor so the, the, the finished paint is a a single stage acrylic enamel Martin it's a Martin Sonor product and the color of the of the paint is called diamond white but what I ended up having having the paint guy do was add some yellow or brown to it to turn it into a little bit more of a cream that's what the firewall is and all the other parts that are on the car it has just a little bit of a cream and off-white to it so um, I also need to get my tie rod ends painted so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this video but I need to mask off the threads and the shank so I want to make sure that's bare metal and some of the threads on this as well and then get these both in in sealer or primer uh, so that's it guys I appreciate everyone following along uh, thanks to everybody that I met over this past weekend over at Brad and Kathy's house North Shore Strokers thank you Brad and Kathy thank you Baron uh, just Brian there's so many guys that I talked to Phil uh, so many guys that I talk to that watch the channel and appreciate what I'm doing they, they also appreciate the fact that I'm self-taught I don't have anybody in my family that that did this stuff no one I was never taught I was never told this is what you got to do no no lifelong hot rodder took me under his wing and said alright man I'm gonna show you the ropes this is me learning just organically figuring things out as I go learning as I go and at the end of the day if I'm happy with the stuff that I'm doing really I think that's all that matters and like I said before as long as this car goes down the road straight stops stops the way it's supposed to stop the steering's good and it's safe I'm happy so all right everyone well my battery was starting to die on my camera because I had been filming the whole time sandblasting in the paint process or the primer process I ended up masking things off I got the cross member in sealer also the mount for the pan hard bar and then all the spots that the where the frame and the body was sitting on the chassis cart a while back those also had to be primed so i got all those bits and pieces in primer i also i'll show you guys what i ended up getting done on the uh, that's on the rack so these are all the things that i got sealed up today obviously the rear axles in sealer did a whole bunch of coats on that the ladder bars got the cycle fenders so the outside's painted the inside is going to be white as long along with the the brackets themselves so i'll get those painted the only thing i'm really going to sand i think is the steering wheel which i took the steering wheel off so i could get the the fenders on there got my tie rod ends for my wishbones in sealer all my clevis mounts License plate bracket, the U-bolts for the, the rear coil springs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to roll this paint cart into my garage. I don't know what the weather's going to be, and I don't want to leave that outside with the canopy not tied down to anything. So I'm going to move it in the garage. All right, so all the parts that are on the rack, I'm not going to sand anything. As long as I can get it into paint within three days, which the only thing I probably won't get into paint is the rear axle because i got to pull it apart. And I had said earlier, I'm waiting on the axle seals and the bearings. Those will hopefully be in early this week. I don't know. I ordered them a couple weeks ago. So that's it. So I'm just going to wrap up this video here. Got everything in primer and ready to get stuff into paint so hope you guys had a good productive weekend i did tons of hot rod stuff this weekend me and Allie did and it was good to finally get this monkey off my back as far as getting things in sealer i had a lot of bare metal sitting around and i don't like to have bare metal sitting around so uh on to the next thing
which will be paint. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.